Hey guys, since I uh finally finally I'm finally able to get 86 box for Mac OS. So what I'm gonna be doing here is attempting to do the floppy disk installation of Windows 98. And what's gonna be a little different is it's gonna be a little bit longer than the CD installation in comparison, and the floppy disk installation is basically more is pretty much very stripped down due to its floppy disk constraints so so without further ado let me go ahead and get um 86 box up and running Let's go. We're gonna go ahead. And press enter. We're gonna configure only unallocated disk space, just like the regular installation. So we're gonna enable large disk support. The boot disk is already inserted, so we can go ahead and press enter. All right, so now it's formatting the drive. So it shouldn't take that long, despite this being a virtual machine. Being emulating a Pentium 2. So let me get disk one insert and I'll be right back. So disk one's been already inserted. So let's go ahead and press enter. We're going to go ahead and run scan disk. All right, so we're in setup. So let's go ahead and click continue. So this is probably gonna take a while because it's using the floppy disk installation. So I'm probably gonna pause here and there, so I'll be right back. So we got disk two insert because so now we got to insert disk three. So we got disk three inserted, so let's go ahead and click OK to continue on. Because what we're going to be doing is going
going through the setup wizard basically. So it's basically going to take a while. So we're going to go ahead and accept the license agreement. So let's click next. In this part, I got to enter the product key. So I'll be right back. After we inserted the product key from the, uh, which is kind of different from the CD setup wizard after you do the part of the installation, you usually get the product key after the file copying portion. So we're going to go ahead and click next since we selected C Windows. Okay, so this is going to take a little time. All right, so we're going to choose our setup options. So we're going to we'll just do typical, but even though we'll still be able to do to select the components. So this is where it gets real interesting using the floppy disk installation. So let's go ahead and click next. So let's click next. So what we're going to do is we're going to select show me a list of components so I can choose so I know what we're installing so let's look under accessibility so we'll get the accessibility tool so we can have the the black and inverted mouse pointers including the large and extra large so let's see what we got for accessories so We'll get the briefcase and desktop wallpapers. You may notice there's no option for games or mouse pointers for like the 3D pointers. So you do get the select get all the screen savers. So we're gonna get all the additional screen savers. So like the solitaire and free cell, you don't get that in the floppy disk version with due to storage constraints. So let's see what we got for communication. So we're going to get, we'll just get virtual private networking. Dial up server just for the heck of it. And we'll get multi language, multi language support. You don't get a multimedia category, so you ain't going to be able to get the sample sounds or the multimedia sound schemes. I ain't gonna worry too much about system tools, so there's no need. And unfortunately, you don't get desktop themes in the floppy disk version. So let's go ahead and click next. All right, so we're going to give the uh, virtual machine a name. So we're going to, we don't really need a description. So we're going to use select my country. You know, it's going to try and create a startup disk, which although you can easily get around it. It ain't, you don't really have to create one. So this is where we're going to have to be swapping out the multiple floppy disks. So with the power of video editing, I'm going to eventually be right back once this catastrophe of swapping the floppy disk through the installation gets done. So. I'll see you on the other end. All right, so several moments later, I finally got through past the swapping the floppy disk out 
throughout the installation. It took like almost two about two hours, so big shout out to the Maritime Girl for uh doing the Windows 98 installation on actual hardware, so it's already asking me for disk number 33. So if something interesting happens and I'll show you I'll get you see y'all in the next part. Alright, since we got past the file copying portion of setup, so now we can officially reboot the VM. So let's restart. So we get to see the moment of truth. Go ahead and restart. Let's see what else we got left in setup besides the hardware detection. Let's see if any type of final touches that setup has to do. So we're going to go ahead and select our time zone, of course. So it's doing all the final touches, getting Windows 98 fully set up. And you get the iconic Windows 98 setup drums. That was also carried over in Windows Me. So we should be booting into the desktop. You may notice the channel bar doesn't have all the cha all the your usual channels on the internet that usually comes with Internet Explorer 4. So let me make some adjustments. So 
this get this all fully set up make a few little basic adjustments so I'm going to save this color scheme so we can have still have the gradient title bars So we're going to open up the Windows Explorer. So I want to show you something in the media folder while uh, while I got this virtual machine up. So you may notice in the media folder you only have the Microsoft sound. This is like very similar to a default installation of Windows 95 when you do the default installation. You don't get all the error sounds and all the sound schemes and all the MIDI files you just have the Microsoft sound when you don't install sample sounds in the multimedia sound schemes. Which is kind of slightly different. You still get the same right, same options of components from the floppy disk installation. One important thing though when you're doing the floppy disk install, it's basically like a stripped down version of Windows 98 pretty much. It's like Microsoft punishing you for not having a CD-ROM drive when you can't be able to install all the goodies and components that you want in your Windows 98 installation. You see it's already missing the ding.wav file. So in another video we're going to be attempting to install Windows 98 second edition by doing an, the Windows 98 second edition upgrade. So hope you find this video interesting and thanks for watching.